Welcome to my first video, and I want to show you how to make this simple motion graphic. If you learn just the simple concepts I'm going to teach you today, pretty much all the stuff that I'm showing you, you can build around to create something like these that I'm about to show you. I basically just looked up stuff on different template sites and recreated them in Fusion with the basic knowledge that I got from the fundamentals of making motion graphics. So if you look here, you can go ahead. I mean, you can make something like this with the concepts I'm going to teach you. Something like this. Something like that. And even something like that. And it's all using the same concepts that we're going to go over today. So why don't we go in and I'm going to show you around basically the interface of Fusion if you're completely new. Very quick, we're going to brush over it because mainly I just want to show you like how to make this and what you need to understand to make it happen. Um, basically what we're going to do, we're going to go over to our effects. If you go up to your effects library here in your edit page, we're going to go to Fusion Composition. We're going to throw that onto this. And then just so you know, if you do go into Fusion, you do have to have the uh, marker here over the clip. It is kind of annoying, especially if you have layered clips. You, there is ways to choose just like in the color page, but just so you know, it has to go over. So we're going to come here into the Fusion clip and I'm going to show you around here a little bit. So basically this is your view window. This is your inspector, just like in the editor. And then this is where you're going to work on your node tree. And these are all your most common effects, basically. The ones we're going to work with today are background, which is this one right here. Uh, our rectangle, which is basically like a mat or a key that you're gonna be able to shape things with. And then we're gonna use the text tool quite a bit. And then the merge, which is the most important node. We'll go over these like as we go, so it makes more sense. So to start off, I'm actually gonna set this to one window. We don't need, oh, it was already set to one. We don't need two. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is our media out. You need this to get back into the edit page. Like if you don't push this to an, a media out, there's nothing's gonna be there. So that's all automatically gonna come up. You're always going to leave that. And I'll explain these nodes really quick. So we're going to add a background node here. I didn't want it to do that. I had the media out selected. So what we want to do is this is the output. So all of these have outputs. This is how you're going to put one node into another. So I'm going to take this and plug it into this yellow. The yellow is essentially the background node. And you'll see why Like once we use a merge node. So basically, let me just pull out a merge node here because this is the most important node you're going to use. You cannot make a fusion composition without a merge node. Basically, because we don't have layers, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you're sort of familiar with fusion. Fusion does not work on layers. It works on using different nodes, just like in, you know, if you've done coloring, they work on nodes. So I'm going to come here and you can go ahead and you could select the merge, but the quicker way to do things is if you hit shift in space, I can go in here with my background selected and select the merge node. So if we take a look at the merge node here, and this is something that I guess can be a little confusing or daunting at first. I'm trying to disconnect this. There we go. So the merge node has three inputs and it has again, one output doing, doing circles. That's a lot of fun to do by the way. Um, so anyways, we have our background input. We have our foreground input. We have our key or mat input or effects input. And then we have our output. So let's go ahead, let's put our background here and let's plug our merge in so we can see everything again. So basically a background is just a background node, but in order to create shapes, you use a background node with one of these basically uh, keys or mats that basically will, will shape, you can shape stuff with a background. So it creates a shape rather than just being a plain solid background. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna deselect this. I'm gonna hit this rectangle tool I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna take this rectangle rectangle tool and I'm gonna take the output and I'm going to place it into the background. Once we get there, you can see that now we have a rectangle. So with this rectangle, we can go in here and start shaping things. We can shape the, shape the width, the height, and this is again, like I said, this is the inspector. Just like in the edit page, you're gonna be able to go in here and change things. And every, basically every inspector, every node is going to have a different inspector. You know, it's gonna have different features depending on what you're clicked on. So what we wanna do here though, is we wanna just make a small line like we saw in the example. So let's go ahead and make this 0 0.02. Let's go one. This is kind of a pain. I wish there was like, I don't know. I find this to be a pain, to be honest. I could typing these in. It does a good job. Okay, let's go zero 0.01, not zero zero 0.01. I'm getting, getting ahead of myself here. Let's make this a little shorter. Let's go to three. Let's go, and now, okay, so we have our shape. Cool. It's black because the color of the background is black. So we can go in here 
and we can change the color. Let's go to, here, I'm gonna select it from here. Why don't we go to, let's do like, you know, the orange we had-ish, something like that. Good enough. So we got that. Cool, we have a shape. So essentially what we wanna do now is we wanna create some movement and have this shape come in. So how do we do that? Well, we use another rectangle and it's basically going to be a mask and it's going to hide or show this other rectangle depending on where it is. So what you wanna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna hit another rectangle. And right now it's just creating another rectangle. What we need to do is change the mode and what we need to do is change it to subtract now you can't see it, but what we can do is invert this mask so when it's inside of here, you can see it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the height of this to be about there, because you'll see why later. I wanna get it pretty close. So it's about right there. And this project is in 30 frames a second. You could do it in 24. I just find it easier because it's easier to click on 30 than going to 24. I mean, I don't know if it really matters. I can't tell the difference when I do it in 24 or 30. So I'm gonna start on 30, and this is where, this is one second into our clip. So zero to 30, if you're at 30 frames, you're getting one second. So I wanna go ahead here and basically select this rectangle, and we want it to move in like we saw in the example. So I'm going to go to this, oh, not right here, where are we at? Okay, so this is where our positions are on the frame. You can move it that way. So I wanna create a keyframe for this right here. So I'm going to either hit this, which if you're familiar, you should be familiar with keyframe from other stuff. I'm gonna click that, it's gonna add a keyframe at 30 and you'll see there's a little white dot there. Now what I wanna do is pull this out of frame so I can't see it. So now if I hit play, it comes in. It looks terrible. It looks like you made this in uh, PowerPoint because it doesn't have a nice movement. So this is the most important thing that you really need to get a grasp around, I think, in order to create more fluid, nice looking graphics. So this, this is your spline editor. So the spline is going to allow you to change how this movement occurs. So when we open this, the first thing you wanna do when you have something selected, this is going to fit what the movement you just made is. And you can either scroll and pick both of these, or you could hit with like every program ever I've used from music to this, it, control A or command A is select all. So you're gonna select them all. You can go here and hit this smooth, or you can just hit the S key to save yourself some time. You'll be doing this a lot. So go ahead and hit the S key. And now we get a much more smooth movement. It's still a little linear and not that interesting. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this handle. Once you start dragging it, if you hit alt or option and you drag it over, you're gonna get a bit more fun in the movement. It's still a little meh, so what I wanna do, I do this, I, this is kinda how you get the nice movements. You really have to shape these S-curves. So what I've been doing is like, I'll go to, if we did it 30, I'll go to 20, I'll fit this here, and I'll pull this other one as well. And it's gonna have a little more movement. And one other thing I wanna do, so you see how this mask is working, essentially. So if I select this mask, you can see that it's coming into the mask. So now what you can give a little extra like movement or fun to the movement is let's say we're here on 30. I wanna actually move this mask as well. So the bottom also kinda of like tucks up and it kinda of like makes a nice movement to it. So I'm gonna to go to 30 frames here and I'm going to select its position on the X, Y axis. I'm gonna make that mark there. Or wait, no, I'm sorry, I did that backwards. I want to set my zero first, because you'll see why. I, I think once you see it, it'll make more sense. So I'm gonna hit its mark at zero, because we don't want that to move. And then when we get to 30, I want it to move up a little bit. Just like that. So when I hit that now, you can see how I'm gonna cut off the bottom, but again, the spline editor. This is so important, you need to go in there. We're gonna deselect this one, we're gonna fit Select all, hit our smooth again. Let's go back to zero and then let's drag this over. Let's go to our 20 mark. And again, you can make them different, but I'm just gonna hold them to the kind of the same movement. And now if we zoom in, let's zoom in, get rid of that and hit play. You get like a, nice, a much more organic, nice movement. And this is like, when you see nice graphics, this is what's going on. They're just very good with masking, using their masks in an interesting way and very good with the spline editor. So 
basically from here, I think we can talk about more about the merge node because the merge node is probably still confusing. So essentially, like I said, we have our background input, we have our foreground, and I think everyone understands what a foreground and a background is, but just in case, because it is kind of confusing, you know, if it's in the yellow, it's gonna technically be behind it. If you wanted something to go over it, like if you just had maybe a colored square that you wanted to put text over, with this, we don't have anything overlaying over each other. So yeah, you could put your text over top by putting it on the green node. So what we're gonna do here now, we wanna add some text. So let's go over to our text plus, which is generally what you're going to use. You could also do your shift here again, type in text, text plus. There's also a text 3D. We're not doing 3D today. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm going to take this and put it into my foreground. I'm going to go to 30 seconds. I'm going to type in, I'm going to pick, let's go to Century Gothic. Sure, that sounds great. Let's put in my name again, because you know I'm an all-around guy. That, that will definitely be my job title, by the way, for this kind of lower third. Uh, let's do... Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to go with that. And then, essentially, we're going to do the kind of the same thing. We're going to use masks to basically allow this stuff to be seen or not be seen, and then uh, keyframe the movement and make it smooth with the spine with the spine tool. So essentially, I think now that this comes in at 30, I want to just move this over. Put that right. This isn't going to look the best because I just want to get through this quickly because I know no one has an attention span on the internet these days. So let's say that works good there. Now we want to mask this bad boy. So let's put another rectangle over that. So if it's in the if it's in the rectangle, you can see it. If it's not, you can't see it. So we're gonna butt this rectangle up, right up. It doesn't really matter on the size because it's just gonna come out, but you'll see, we'll butt it up right on that orange. So we're pretty happy with where this is. And we're at 30 frames. This is where everything comes in. So why don't we go to 60 frames, one second ahead. Let's hit our mark here. That's where it's gonna be when it comes in eventually. And then at 30, you know, it's not gonna be seen. Oh, I grabbed, oh crap, did I not grab the right one? I hit the wrong one, sorry about that. Let's try that again. So we have to go to this right here on this second node for the second menu option for text. We're gonna hit our X, Y axis and set a keyframe again. Also, you can go to set key if you run a right click, seems like more work. I would just say just do it that way, but you know, up to you. There's always different ways to do things. So again, I screwed up. Let's go to 60, make our keyframe. Go back to 30, and we're gonna pull it a frame. So now we get it coming up. Look at that. Looks like a PowerPoint still. Let's get rid of the PowerPoint vibes. So let's get rid of this. Let's zoom to fit, select all, do our S. Again, see, it's a lot of the same stuff over and over. It's just figuring out how to do it and make different shapes. Let's go to 50, let's select this guy. Drag this over, and then we got ourselves that, that, and then let's make one more. So we want to put more text in. What do we need? Another merge node. So we're going to go ahead, select merge, put that bad boy there. We're going to grab another text plus node. How about we do it this way this time? Not, I won't have anything selected, otherwise it's going to add a merge node and all this stuff when you have stuff selected. So I'm gonna go into here, go into the foreground again. Again, we're not, we don't really have a foreground background, but generally anything from before is going to go in the background, depending. Sometimes you might have to do it opposite. But all right, let's do another one. All around guy. Perfect. All around guy over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a really thin. Um, let's go with, uh, Monserrat, and we'll go thin, sure. Let's make this a lot smaller. That's too small. Let's go with five. Okay. So again, I know this isn't perfect, but you're getting the gist here, and that's all that really matters, right? So we want to essentially go ahead here and bring these all in. We're going to do the same exact thing with the last text. 
I think we'll do them at an opposite time. Why don't we do it, if this came in all the way at 60, why don't we start bringing this in at 50? So let's add another mask essentially to this. And it's just gonna go into this key input like we did with all the other ones. And then if it's in there, you can see it. If it's not, see what I mean? You can't see it. So we'll butt it up just like the other one. And if we're gonna come in at 50, let's go to 80 frames. Let's go over to our text tool. Let's go here, set our key point, go back to 50, pull this bad boy out right there. And as usual, let's go back to the spline. Like I'm not, I'm not kidding, you're literally, this is all of this is masking, spline, key. And then I gotta go over the keyframe editor and show you a couple other things, but we're almost done here. And I hope that this can get you on the feet to get started with this stuff. Uh, so boom, boom, I might even speed this, oh God. I might even speed this up or not. I don't know. What am I doing with my life? Oh my Lord. Let's try that again. Now I'm trying to hurry and I'm making this worse on myself. All right, we need to go to 50. I'm getting, I'm getting excited here. All right, 50. Let's go to 70. Keep the same pacing with everything. And then boom. Look at that. Jordan Ruzik, all around guy. I love it. So essentially you have all your keyframe stuff here. So when you do your spline stuff, you're not gonna screw up like the nice little movements you made. Working with a spline editor besides making the movements is a nightmare. Basically what you could do, if you're like, oh, I'm not liking how this is over here, you can just go ahead and move it around. So it goes in later or earlier and it doesn't affect what you the movements you've made with your spline editor. So you basically understand what we're doing here. We're using backgrounds, text nodes, and rectangle masks for this. That's it. And a lot of it's going to be basically that in creating keyframed movements. A few other thing, one other thing, like a pro tip, I'm gonna show you here, because this drove me nuts when I first had to figure it out. <laughs> it took me like 30 minutes to figure out. I, I don't know why it was so difficult. But let's say you're making this and you want to change, change the text. Uh, on this and you but you only want to do it to like the last three words like you want to make a bold or something You can't just go into the text stuff here and change it here It's going to change this entire line So what you want to do is you want to right click in this box and you go to character level styling That is how you're going to edit individual characters within a sentence You can change the colors you can change the typeface whatever you want So we'll go to character level styling and then from there you have that key right there you can go to your modifiers and then you would think like, oh, I could just go select this and start changing things. No, you actually have to do it on the screen. I don't, I don't know why it's weird, but at least then it's like highlighted so you can see it with these green bars. So now I can go in here and be like, all right, let's make that light or let's make that bold and be like, all right, let's make this, let's make this a different color. Let's, let's make it blue. That's another quick pro tip is gonna save you a lot of time if you wanna start changing things within a sentence. That's it. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos with this from videography to motion graphics, stuff like this. And if you're watching this and you enjoyed it or you're confused, leave a, leave a comment below. Please subscribe because that'd be cool. I probably have zero. I mean, I definitely have zero right now, except maybe I subscribe to myself. And if you have any like graphics that you've seen that you would like to learn how to make, leave a comment on that. So anyways, hope this was cool. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.